From stress and anxiety to the isolation of the COVID pandemic, national experts are sounding the alarm once again on the opioid epidemic that has only worsened in the last year in this country. As we come out of the national pandemic, the challenges, of course, are many. Tonight, we're continuing our series on those who are in recovery from drug and alcohol addiction. I recently sat down with a young man named Nick, who, like many, chooses to stay clean right now for two very important reasons, his children. I'm an alcoholic, and this is my second treatment. Um, first one I'm taking actually seriously. <laughs> what happened with the first one? The first one I thought it was more a uh, issue of self, uh, mental health, so I was self-medicating with alcohol, and I thought if I got the mental health under wraps, I wouldn't be an alcoholic. I'd be able to drink socially or mm -hmm. keep it under control, and that fell apart quickly. When did you know that it went from social drinking to I think this is a problem? Probably four or five years ago. So what I was happened? drinking for quite a while. Um, I had my second child. So I have a seven-year-old and a three-year-old. Uh -huh. And somewhere in the middle there, it just became more of a priority than my family or work or anything else. It was. Did you think, I need to stop for my kids? Yeah, I had that thought, not a lot of action behind it. It kept cropping up that I need to do something different. I need some help. And then you have to come to a realization that you have to do it for you. Yes. How, what has made this time different for you? Um, just the support, the connection in the group. Um, before, I was more focused on the mental health and I'm really addressing the root of the problem. There's something about being court ordered to go to a rehab program, inpatient, outpatient, whatever it is, and to voluntarily do something. Yes. Uh, tell me about that. You are here because you want to be, and publicly telling your story, that's not easy to do either. No, it's, uh, I see it as an opportunity as being a spokesperson for the program. Um, I'm very comfortable in my recovery and I hope other people can choose that too. I see a lot of active addicts that could really benefit from sobering up. How long have you been sober this time? And um, I've only been sober for one month now. No, don't say yeah. only. It's you have been sober a big milestone. for 30 days. Yes, it's my third time hitting one month, but this is the one I feel the most comfortable about. What do you think is going to be that, uh, that change for you that this time is going to be it. I you want really, it? yeah, I feel comfortable in acknowledging that I do have a problem drinking and I'm okay never drinking again, but to just think about it one day at a time, not long term. I'm going to be 56 years old not drinking, but I can't think that far ahead. Uh, is it one day at a time for you? Do you struggle like, ugh, or is it, does it come and go in spurts? It comes and goes. It's easy most days, but then there's sometimes I get bored or there's not a lot going on, or when I don't get to see my children, I'm kind of just looking for an out. And it's been a long time since I've genuinely felt emotions and starting to get used to them is a little easier and definitely healthier. How is your family for you? Do you have support um, outside of this room? Yes, I moved in with my mom um, in February. So I went to an inpatient group uh, January to February, and then I moved in with her in a small town. She's many years sober, so it does run in the family, but she's a great support. She's got a lot of knowledge, and sometimes I'll come to her with problems, and she says, well, read these pages of the book, or it reminds me exactly of this, and that turns it all around. Uh, what have the people here done for you? Because this, being in a group setting, can sometimes be the scariest part for some folks. They're like, I want no part of that. Yeah. I uh, told Tim that I wanted to be in the evening smaller group because it'd be more comfortable. Yeah. Um, Not but all he, those eyes on you. Exactly. He encouraged me to come to this group. He saw that there'd be a lot of individuals that I could uh, get support from. And just hearing other people's stories, no matter how different they are, you can always relate to them a little bit. And I think they're better at kind of articulating some of the thoughts and emotions that I have that I don't really know how to put words to. What are you hoping that somebody who will see this, because it's one thing to be on, uh, it, this is going to air, you know, one time, yeah. but then it goes on the internet and it's out there for a long time. What are yes. you hoping somebody gets out of this? 
I hope that someone uh, sees that there is a way out. Um, when you're in active addiction, it just seems like the end, this is the way things are. You lose a lot of hope and uh, self-empowerment, but there's a way to fix it. Your mom must be pretty proud because when you're somebody who struggled with addiction, then you find sobriety. To watch your child in that is heartbreaking. Yes. How is your relationship with her? Much better. Um, it was kind of distance, and yeah, there was probably a lot of pain there, just knowing what I was going through, having gone through it herself, and she's been great. She's taken care of me a ton, which I really appreciate. Uh, there has to be an element of forgiveness, yeah. um, forgiving ourselves. Yep. Um, but then having, you know, your mom is your mom. She's just not going to stop loving you. That's what moms do. Exactly. Um, but working on forgiveness, that's, that's another piece that some people think they can't have that. So-and-so is never going to forgive me. But it, yeah. it, it happens. Definitely. Speak to that a little bit. <laughs> well, I've... Uh... Did you have to forgive yourself? Did you ever yes, hate yourself? Definitely. And alcohol and probably other substances make it worse. They make the emotions way over the top of what they really are. So it seems impossible to address those. But once you get sober and start forgiving yourself, which is hard, but knowing that what you're doing each day to better yourself or do the right thing is really what matters. You can't change the past.